Boko comes home. Boko the diesel engine had been given a great welcome when he returned. His, his days of being at the works was over, and he was finally mended again. We're pleased to have you back, Boko, said, Mo said Molly. I, I, I guess you're all pleased to have me back, said Boko. Oh, it's been a, it's been a few long weeks, at, weeks when I was at the works, said Boko, and he was happy to be back. Just then, the fat controller came to see Boko. Boko, I want you to take some scrap to the. I want you to take some scrap to the scrap yards, he said. It's an, it's an it's a very important job since you have now finally come back. Yes, sir. Right away, sir," said Boko, and he, and he puffed away. Until at last, Boko arrived at the docks. He buffered up to the scrap trucks where they were waiting for him. And then, Boko was coupled, and he was, and he was on his way to the scrap yard. Soon Boko began to, began to feel better for a, lo for a long trip with the fresh air. Oh, he said, fresh air doesn't make me better, he said. It was boiling in the in the works, he said to his driver. Indeed it was. Indeed it was, he said. Soon they approached the hill. Boko could see that Boko could see that he was on the same track where he almost crashed into the where he where he crashed into the chocolate factory. Oh no, not this track again, he moaned. Isn't it the one with the slippery bales? Don't you, he said his driver. The the hill is safe now, but we'll still take it slowly. But Boko was worried. When he made it, when he made it through the tunnels and out, he was now heading for the Action Canyon. Boko was worried. And then, poor Boko was was shutting his eyes before he could have an, another nasty slide on his first day back. But he wasn't. He opened his eyes. Wow, he said. So I'm not having a nasty slide after all. He, sa he said to himself, I've done it. As a boy, said his driver. And Boko wasn't afraid of the action canyon at all. Until the next day, Boko had other duties to attend to. He then, he then rolled into a siding next to... Next to Hank and Connor, but Hank wasn't feeling very happy. What? What? Watch it, you smelly diesel, shouted Hank. You almost ruined my paintwork. I'm sorry, said Boko. I didn't mean to. Hey, said Connor. Be nice to Boko, Hank. We're happy to have him back. Yeah, yeah, whatever, said, said Hank crossly. But while you two are having a long chat, I'm just going to pull the express, he said, and he puffed away. What's wrong with him? asked Boko. Oh, don't mind him, said Connor. He's been, he's not been so happy lately. Oh, I can tell, said Boko. Said Boko. Well, let's not mind him. I guess he's off to pull the express. Exactly, said Connor. When Hank breaks, breaks down sooner or later, you will prove to him that you are really useful. I guess so, said Boko. And with that, and with that, both Bo Boko and Connor were still having a friendly chat. Later, both Boko and Connor were, were laughing and telling jokes at the docks when they heard a familiar whistle. Was that Hank? thought Connor. And it was. There was Hank. Racing down too fast with the express in shock. He only had two coaches and and nothing else. Was that Hank racing down with the express? asked Boko. Yeah, said Yeah, said said Hank, and he's not even had his brake coach. Had his brake coach. Hank's gonna get into trouble, said Connor's driver, if he doesn't have a brake coach. 
Then his driver looked. Connor's driver looked back and saw saw a and saw something coming towards them. It it was it was only a railway coach, and it and it had come loose out of one of Hank's coaches. That's Hank's brake coach," said said Connor. "Do you think you can?" Do you think you can get it, Boko? Sure. Sure, said Boko. I'll have to. And Boko roared away. And meanwhile, the other engines were surprised to see Hank's brake coach on the turntable. Boko soon stepped in and buffered up to the coach. Then, then he set off to find Hank and the express. But by the time Hank reached the station, the passengers were all cross, and both the guard, driver, and fireman had to step in. Don't worry, they said. Your coach, your coach will be coming back. We'll come back and get your coach soon. But then they heard the familiar horn. Who is it? They said. The backing took. There, coming towards them was Boko with Hank's brake coach. He had buffered the coach to one of Hank's coaches, and the passengers, without complaining, all thanked Boko. Boko was smiling when that happened, but Hank was, but Hank, blushing with embarrassment, still had to admit that he had left his brake coach behind. But when the incident was over, Hank puffed in to see Boko and apologise. I'm sorry I was rude to you, Boko, he said. I am really pleased to have you back. It's all right, Hank, laughed Boko. I, I'm sorry, I almost, I almost ruined your paintwork. Friends, friends, said Hank. With that, the two really useful engines were good friends and... And from that day on, Hank did really admit that he had left his brake coach behind thanks to Boko, Boko stepping in to the rescue.